A sword is a very large knife intended for slashing or thrusting that is longer than a dagger. The precise definition of the term varies with the historical epoch or the geographical region under consideration. A sword consists of a long blade attached to a hilt, itself consisting of a handle, guard, and on some swords, a pommel which improves the sword's weight distribution. The blade can be straight or curved. Thrusting swords have a pointed tip on the blade, and tend to be straighter, slashing swords have a sharpened cutting edge on one or both sides of the blade, and are more likely to be curved. Many swords are designed for both thrusting and slashing. Historically, the sword developed in the Bronze Age, evolving from the dagger, the earliest specimens date to about 1600 BC. The later Iron Age sword remained fairly short and without a cross guard. The spatha, as it developed in the late Roman army, became the predecessor of the European sword of the Middle Ages, at first adopted as the migration period sword, and only in the High Middle Ages, developed into the classical arming sword with cross guard. The word sword continues the Old English, sweatword. The use of a sword is known as swordsmanship or, in a modern context, as fencing. In the early modern period, Western sword design diverged into roughly two forms, the thrusting swords and the sabers. The thrusting swords such as the rapier and eventually the small sword were designed to impale their targets quickly and inflict deep stab wounds. Their long and straight yet light and well-balanced design made them highly maneuverable and deadly in a duel but fairly ineffective when used in a slashing or chopping motion. A well-aimed lunge and thrust could end a fight in seconds with just the sword's point leading to the development of a fighting style which closely resembles modern fencing. The saber, saber, and similar blades such as the cutlass were built more heavily and were more typically used in warfare. Built for slashing and chopping at multiple enemies, often from horseback, the saber's long curved blade and slightly forward weight balance gave it a deadly character all its own on the battlefield. Most sabers also had sharp points and double-edged blades, making them capable of piercing soldier after soldier in a cavalry charge. Sabres continued to see battlefield use until the early 20th century. The U.S. Navy kept tens of thousands of sturdy cutlasses in their armory well into World War II and many were issued to Marines in the Pacific as jungle machetes. Non-European weapons called sword include single-edged weapons such as the Middle Eastern scimitar, the Chinese daio and the related Japanese katana. The Chinese Jian is an example of a non-European double-edged sword, like the European models derived from the double-edged Iron Age sword. History Prehistoric and Ancient History The first weapons that can be described as swords date to around 3300 BC. They have been found in Ars Lanteep, Turkey, are made from arsenical bronze, and are about 60 cm, 24 in, long. Some of them are inlaid with silver. Bronze Age The sword developed from the knife or dagger. A knife is unlike a dagger in that a knife has only one cutting surface, while a dagger has two cutting surfaces. When the construction of longer blades became possible, from the late 3rd millennium BC in the Middle East, first in arsenic copper, then in tin bronze. Blades longer than 60 cm, 24 in were rare and not practical until the late Bronze Age because the Young's modulus of bronze is relatively low, and consequently longer blades would bend easily. The development of the sword out of the dagger was gradual, the first weapons that can be classified as swords without any ambiguity are those found in Minoan Crete, dated to about 1700 BC, reaching a total length of more than 100 cm. These are the Type A swords of the Aegean Bronze Age. One of the most important, and longest-lasting, type swords of the European Bronze Age was the Naui II type, named for Julius Naui who first described them, also known as Griffjung and Schwert, lit. Griptung Sword This type first appears in c. the 13th century BC in northern Italy, or a general Urnfield background, and survives well into the Iron Age, with a lifespan of about seven centuries. During its lifetime, Metallurgy changed from bronze to iron, but not its basic design. Naui II swords were exported from Europe to the Aegean, and as far afield as Ugarit, beginning about 1200 BC, 
i.e. just a few decades before the final collapse of the palace cultures in the Bronze Age collapse. Now e two swords could be as long as 85 cm, but most specimens fall into the 60 to 70 cm range. Robert Drews linked the Naui type two swords, which spread from southern Europe into the Mediterranean, with the Bronze Age collapse. Naui two swords, along with Nordic full-hilted swords, were made with functionality and aesthetics in mind. The hilts of these swords were beautifully crafted and often contained false rivets in order to make the sword more visually appealing. Swords coming from northern Denmark and northern Germany usually contain three or more fake rivets in the hilt. Sword production in China is attested from the Bronze Age Shang Dynasty. The technology for bronze swords reached its high point during the Warring States period and Qin Dynasty. Amongst the Warring States period swords, some unique technologies were used, such as casting high tin edges over softer, lower tin cores, or the application of diamond-shaped patterns on the blade, see Sword of Gujian. Also unique for Chinese bronzes is the consistent use of high tin bronze, 17-21% tin, which is very hard and breaks if stressed too far, whereas other cultures preferred lower tin bronze, usually 10% which bends if stressed too far. Although iron swords were made alongside bronze, it was not until the early Han period that iron completely replaced bronze. In South Asia earliest available Bronze Age swords of copper were discovered in the Harappan sites, in present-day Pakistan, and date back to 2300 BC. Swords have been recovered in archaeological findings throughout the Ganges Jamuna Dub region of India consisting of bronze but more commonly copper. Diverse specimens have been discovered in Fetegarha, where there are several varieties of hilt. These swords have been variously dated to times between 1700-1400 BC, but were probably used more in the opening centuries of the first millennium BC. Iron Age Iron became increasingly common from the 13th century BC. Before that the use of swords was less frequent. The iron was not quench-hardened although often containing sufficient carbon, but work-hardened like bronze by hammering. This made them comparable or only slightly better in terms of strength and hardness to bronze swords. They could still bend during use rather than spring back into shape. But the easier production, and the better availability of the raw material for the first time permitted the equipment of entire armies with metal weapons, though Bronze Age Egyptian armies were sometimes fully equipped with bronze weapons. Ancient swords are often found at burial sites. The sword was often placed on the right side of the corpse. However, there are exceptions to this. A lot of times the sword was kept over the corpse. In many late Iron Age graves, the sword and the scabbard were bent at 180 degrees. It was known as killing the sword. Thus they might have considered swords as the most potent and powerful object. Greco-Roman Antiquity by the time of classical antiquity and the Parthian and Sassanid empires in Iran, iron swords were common. The Greek Zephos and the Roman Gladius are typical examples of the type, measuring some 60 to 70 centimeters, 24 to 28 in. The late Roman Empire introduced the longer spatha, the term for its wielder, spatharius, became a court rank in Constantinople, and from this time, the term long sword is applied to swords comparatively long for their respective periods. Swords from the Parthian and Sassanian empires were quite long, the blades on some late Sassanian swords being just under a meter long. Swords were also used to administer various physical punishments, such as non-surgical amputation or capital punishment by decapitation. The use of a sword, an honorable weapon, was regarded in Europe since Roman times as a privilege reserved for the nobility and the upper classes. The Periplus of the Erythrian Sea mentions swords of Indian iron and steel being exported from India to Greece. Sri Lankan and Indian blades made of Damascus steel also found their way into Persia. Persian Antiquity In the first millennium BC the Persian armies used a sword that was originally of Scythian design called the Akinica, Asinasis. However, the great conquests of the Persians made the sword more famous as a Persian weapon, to the extent that the true nature of the weapon has been lost somewhat as the name Akinica has been used to refer to whichever form of sword the Persian army favored at the time. 
it is widely believed that the original Akinika was a 14 to 18 inch double edged sword. The design was not uniform and in fact identification is made more on the nature of the scabbard than the weapon itself, the scabbard usually has a large, decorative mount allowing it to be suspended from a belt on the wearer's right side. Because of this, it is assumed that the sword was intended to be drawn with the blade pointing downwards ready for surprise stabbing attacks. In the 12th century, the Seljuk dynasty had introduced the curved shamshir to Persia, and this was in extensive use by the early 16th century. Chinese Antiquity Chinese steel swords made their first appearance in the later part of the Western Zhou dynasty, but were not widely used until the 3rd century BC Han dynasty. The Chinese Dao, Pinyin Du, is single-edged, sometimes translated as saber or broadsword, and the Jian, or Pinyin Jian, is double-edged. The Zanmei Dao, literally horse-chopping sword, an extremely long, anti-cavalry sword from the Song dynasty era. Early post-classical history Europe During the Middle Ages sword technology improved, and the sword became a very advanced weapon. It was frequently used by men in battle, particularly during an attack. The Spatha type remained popular throughout the migration period and well into the Middle Ages. Vendel Age spathas were decorated with Germanic artwork, not unlike the Germanic bracteets fashioned after Roman coins. The Viking Age saw again a more standardized production, but the basic design remained indebted to the spatha. Around the 10th century, the use of properly quenched hardened and tempered steel started to become much more common than in previous periods. The Frankish Ulfberheit blades, the name of the maker inlaid in the blade, were of particularly consistent high quality. Charles the Bald tried to prohibit the export of these swords, as they were used by Vikings in raids against the Franks. Wood steel which is also known as Damascus steel was a unique and highly prized steel developed on the Indian subcontinent as early as the 5th century BC. Its properties were unique due to the special smelting and reworking of the steel creating networks of iron carbides described as a globular cementite in a matrix of perlite. The use of Damascus steel in swords became extremely popular in the 16th and 17th centuries. It was only from the 11th century that Norman swords began to develop the crossguard, quillens. During the Crusades of the 12th to 13th century, this cruciform type of arming sword remained essentially stable, with variations mainly concerning the shape of the pommel. These swords were designed as cutting weapons although effective points were becoming common to counter improvements in armor, especially the 14th century change from mail to plate armor. It was during the 14th century, with the growing use of more advanced armor, that the hand and a half sword, also known as a bastard sword, came into being. It had an extended grip that meant it could be used with either one or two hands. Though these swords did not provide a full two-hand grip they allowed their wielders to hold a shield or parrying dagger in their offhand, or to use it as a two-handed sword for a more powerful blow. In the Middle Ages, the sword was often used as a symbol of the Word of God. The names given to many swords in mythology, literature, and history reflected the high prestige of the weapon and the wealth of the owner. West Asia the earliest evidence of curved swords, or scimitars, and other regional variants as the Arabian Saif, the Persian Shamshir and the Turkic Kiliy, is from the 9th century, when it was used among soldiers in the Khurasan region of Persia. East Asia As steel technology improved, single-edged weapons became popular throughout Asia. Derived from the Chinese Jian or Dao, the Korean Wandudado are known from the early medieval Three Kingdoms. Production of the Japanese Tachi, a precursor to the katana, is recorded from CA 900 AD, see Japanese sword. Japan was famous for the swords it forged in the early 13th century for the class of warrior nobility known as the samurai. The types of swords used by the samurai included the Dachi, extra long field sword, Tachi, long cavalry sword, katana, long sword, and Weikaizashi, shorter companion sword for katana. Japanese swords that predate the rise of the samurai caste include the tsuruji, straight double-edged blade, and chokut, straight one-edged blade. Japanese sword making reached the height of its development in the 15th and 16th centuries, when samurai increasingly found a need for a sword to use in closer quarters, 
leading to the creation of the modern katana. Western historians have said that Japanese katana were among the finest cutting weapons in world military history. South Asia The kanda is a double-edged straight sword. It is often featured in religious iconography, theatre, and art depicting the ancient history of India. Some communities venerate the weapon as a symbol of Shiva. It is a common weapon in the martial arts in the Indian subcontinent. Kanda often appears in Hindu, Buddhist, and Sikh scriptures and art. In Sri Lanka, a unique wind furnace was used to produce the high-quality steel. This gave the blade a very hard-cutting edge and beautiful patterns. For these reasons it became a very popular trading material. The Urumi, Tamil, Sural Patai, Lit Curling Blade, Sinhalese, Ithanukatawa, Hindi, Era, is a long sword with a flexible whip-like blade from India. Originating in the country's southern states, it is thought to have existed as far back as the Maurya dynasty, 322-185 BC. The Urumi is considered one of the most difficult weapons to master due to the risk of injuring oneself. It is treated as a steel whip, and therefore requires prior knowledge of that weapon. The Firji, slash Fri slash, derived from the Arabic term for a Western European A franc, was a sword type which used blades manufactured in Western Europe and imported by the Portuguese, or made locally in imitation of European blades. Because of its length the Firji is usually regarded as primarily a cavalry weapon. The sword has been especially associated with the Marathas, who were famed for their cavalry. However, the Firji was also widely used by Sikhs and Rajputs. The Tulwar, Hindi, is a type of curved sword from India and other countries of the Indian subcontinent, it was adopted by communities such as Rajputs, Sikhs and Marathas, who favoured the sword as their main weapon. It became more widespread in the medieval era. Southeast Asia In Indonesia, the images of Indian-style swords can be found in Hindu gods' statues from ancient Java circa 8th to 10th century. However the native types of blade known as Kris, Parang, Kulwang, and Golok were more popular as weapons. These daggers are shorter than sword but longer than common dagger. In the Philippines, Traditional large swords known as the Camp Island and the Panabas were used in combat by the natives. A notable wielder of the Camp Island was Lapu Lapu, the king of Mactan and his warriors who defeated the Spaniards and killed Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan at the Battle of Mactan on April 27, 1521. Traditional swords in the Philippines were immediately banned, but the training in swordsmanship was later hidden from the occupying Spaniards by practices and dances. But because of the banning, Filipinos were forced to use swords that were disguised as farm tools. Bolos and Bali swords were used during the revolutions against the colonialists not only because ammunition for guns was scarce, but also for concealability while walking in crowded streets and homes. Bolos were also used by young boys who joined their parents in the revolution and by young girls and their mothers in defending the town while the men were on the battlefields. During the Philippine-American War in events such as the Balangiga Massacre, most of an American company was hacked to death or seriously injured by bola-wielding guerrillas in Balangiga, Samar. When the Japanese took control of the country, several American special operations groups stationed in the Philippines were introduced to the Filipino martial arts and swordsmanship, leading to this style reaching America despite the fact that natives were reluctant to allow outsiders in on their fighting secrets. Late Post-Classical History From around 1300 to 1500, in concert with improved armor, innovative sword designs evolved more and more rapidly. The main transition was the lengthening of the grip, allowing two-handed use, and a longer blade. By 1400, this type of sword, at the time called Langus Schwart, Long Sword, or Spadun, was common and a number of 15th and 16th century fecht butcher offering instructions on their use survive. Another variant was the specialized armor-piercing swords of the Estoc type. The long sword became popular due to its extreme reach and its cutting and thrusting abilities. The Estoc became popular because of its ability to thrust into the gaps between plates of armor. The grip was sometimes wrapped in wire or coarse animal hide to provide a better grip and to make it harder to knock a sword out of the user's hand. 
A number of manuscripts covering longsword combat and techniques dating from the 13th-16th centuries exist in German, Italian, and English, providing extensive information on longsword combatives as used throughout this period. Many of these are now readily available online. In the 16th century, the large Zwiehander was used by the elite German and Swiss mercenaries known as Doppelsoldners. Zwiehander, literally translated, means two-hander. The Zwiehander possesses a long blade, as well as a huge guard for protection. It is estimated that some Zwiehander swords were over 6 feet, 1.8 m, long, with the one ascribed to Frisian warrior Pier Gerloff Stonia being 7 feet, 2.13 m, long. The gigantic blade length was perfectly designed for manipulating and pushing away enemy pole arms, which were major weapons around this time, in both Germany and Eastern Europe. Doppelsoldners also used Katzbalgers, which means cat gutter. The Katzbalgers S-shaped guard and 2 foot long, 0.61 m, blade made it perfect for bringing in when the fighting became too close to use as we hander. Civilian use of swords became increasingly common during the late Renaissance, with duels being a preferred way to honorably settle disputes. The practice of civilian dueling with specifically designed civilian swords such as the Italian Cinque and Swiss Base Lard, became so popular that according to one scholar, in France during the reign of Henry IV, 1589-1610, more than 4,000 French aristocrats were killed in duels in an 18-year period, during the reign of Louis XIII, 1610-1643, in a 20-year period 8,000 pardons were issued for murders associated with duels. The side sword was a type of war sword used by infantry during the Renaissance of Europe. This sword was a direct descendant of the arming sword. Quite popular between the 16th and 17th centuries, they were ideal for handling the mix of armored and unarmored opponents of that time. A new technique of placing one's finger on the ricasso to improve the grip, a practice that would continue in the rapier, led to the production of hilts with a guard for the finger. This sword design eventually led to the development of the civilian rapier, but it was not replaced by it, and the side sword continued to be used during the rapier's lifetime. As it could be used for both cutting and thrusting, the term cut and thrust sword is sometimes used interchangeably with side sword. Also of note is that as rapiers became more popular, attempts were made to hybridize the blade, sacrificing the effectiveness found in each unique weapon design. These are still considered side swords and are sometimes labeled sword rapier or cutting rapier by modern collectors. Also of note, side swords used in conjunction with bucklers became so popular that it caused the term swashbuckler to be coined. This word stems from the new fighting style of the side sword and buckler which was filled with much swashing and making a noise on the buckler. Within the Ottoman Empire, the use of a curved saber called the yatagon started in the mid-16th century. It would become the weapon of choice for many in Turkey and the Balkans. The sword in this time period was the most personal weapon, the most prestigious, and the most versatile for close combat, but it came to decline in military use as technology, such as the crossbow and firearms changed warfare. However, it maintained a key role in civilian self-defense. Early Modern History Military Sword a single-edged type of sidearm used by the Hussites was popularized in 16th century Germany under its Czech name Dusak, also known as Sabel auf Teutsch Gefass, saber fitted in the German manner. A closely related weapon is the Schnepf or Swiss saber used in early modern Switzerland. The cut and thrust mortuary sword was used after 1625 by cavalry during the English Civil War. This, usually, Two-edged sword sported a half-basket hilt with a straight blade some 9105 cm long. Later in the 17th century, the swords used by cavalry became predominantly single-edged. The so-called Walloon sword, Apey Wallon, was common in the Thirty Years' War and Baroque era. Its hilt was ambidextrous with shell guards and knuckle bow that inspired 18th century continental hunting hangers. Following their campaign in the Netherlands in 1672, the French began producing this weapon as their first regulation sword. Weapons of this design were also issued to the Swedish army from the time of Gustavus Adolphus until as late as the 1850s. Dueling Sword 
The rapier is believed to have evolved either from the Spanish espada ropera or from the swords of the Italian nobility somewhere in the later part of the 16th century. The rapier differed from most earlier swords in that it was not a military weapon but a primarily civilian sword. Both the rapier and the Italian schiavona developed the cross guard into a basket shaped guard for hand protection. During the 17th and 18th centuries, the shorter small sword became an essential fashion accessory in European countries and the New World, though in some places such as the Scottish Highlands large swords as the basket-hilted broadsword were preferred, and most wealthy men and military officers carried one slung from a belt. Both the small sword and the rapier remained popular dueling swords well into the 18th century. As the wearing of swords fell out of fashion, canes took their place in a gentleman's wardrobe. This developed to the gentleman in the Victorian era to use the umbrella. Some examples of canes those known as sword canes or sword sticks incorporate a concealed blade. The French martial art law can develop to fight with canes and sword sticks and has now evolved into a sport. The English martial art single stick is very similar. With the rise of the pistol duel, the dueling sword fell out of fashion long before the practice of dueling itself. By about 1770, English duelists enthusiastically adopted the pistol, and sword duels dwindled. However, the custom of dueling with apes persisted well into the 20th century in France. Such modern duels were not fought to the death, the duelist's aim was instead merely to draw blood from the opponent's sword arm. Late Modern History Military Sidearm Towards the end of its useful life, the sword served more as a weapon of self-defense than for use on the battlefield, and the military importance of swords steadily decreased during the modern age. Even as a personal sidearm, the sword began to lose its preeminence in the early 19th century, reflecting the development of reliable handguns. However, swords were still used in combat, especially in colonial wars between native populations and colonial empires. For example, during the Asa War the Asenizkal Wangs, a sword similar to the Machete, proved very effective in close quarters combat with Dutch troops, leading the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army to adopt a heavy cutlass, also called Kalwang, very similar in appearance to the U.S. Navy Model 1917 cutlass, to counter it. Mobile troops armed with carbines and kolwangs succeeded in suppressing ASA resistance where traditional infantry with rifle and bayonet had failed. From that time on until the 1950s the Royal Dutch East Indies Army, Royal Dutch Army, Royal Dutch Navy and Dutch police used these cutlasses called kolwang. Swords continued in general peacetime use by cavalry of most armies during the years prior to World War I. For example, the British Army formally adopted a completely new design of cavalry sword in 1908, almost the last change in British Army weapons before the outbreak of the war. At the outbreak of World War I infantry officers in all combatant armies still carried swords as part of their field equipment. On mobilization in August 1914 all serving British Army officers were required to have their swords sharpened as the only peacetime use of the weapon had been for saluting on parade. The high visibility and limited practical use of the sword however led to it being abandoned within weeks, although most cavalry continued to carry sabers throughout the war. It was not until the late 1920s and early 1930s that this historic weapon was finally discarded for all but ceremonial purposes by most remaining horse-mounted regiments of Europe and the Americas. In China troops used the long anti-cavalry Miao Dao well into the Second Sino-Japanese War. The last units of British heavy cavalry switched to using armoured vehicles as late as 1938. Swords and other dedicated melee weapons were used occasionally by many countries during World War II, but typically as a secondary weapon as they were outclassed by coexisting firearms. Ceremonial Use Swords are commonly worn as a ceremonial item by officers in many military and naval services throughout the world. Occasions to wear swords include any event in dress uniforms where the rank and file carry arms, parades, reviews, courts martial, tattoos, and changes of command. They are also commonly worn for officers' weddings, and when wearing dress uniforms to church although they are rarely actually worn in the church itself. In the British forces they are also worn for any appearance at court. In the United States, 
every naval officer at or above the rank of lieutenant commander is required to own a sword, which can be prescribed for any formal outdoor ceremonial occasion, they are normally worn for changes of command and parades. For some navy parades, cutlasses are issued to petty officers and chief petty officers. In the U.S. Marine Corps every officer must own a sword, which is prescribed for formal parades and other ceremonies where dress uniforms are worn and the rank and file are under arms. On these occasions depending on their billet, Marine Staff non-commissioned officers, E6 and above, may also be required to carry swords, which have hilts of a pattern similar to U.S. Naval officers' swords but are actually sabers. The USMC Model 1859 NCO sword is the longest continuously issued edged weapon in the U.S. inventory. The Marine officer swords are of the Mame Loop pattern which was adopted in 1825 in recognition of the Marines' key role in the capture of the Tripolitan city of Derna during the First Barbary War. Taken out of issue for approximately 20 years from 1855 until 1875, it was restored to service in the year of the Corps' centennial and has remained in issue since. Sword Replicas The production of replicas of historical swords originates with 19th-century historicism. Contemporary replicas can range from cheap factory-produced look-alikes to exact recreations of individual artifacts, including an approximation of the historical production methods. Some kinds of swords are still commonly used today as weapons often as a sidearm for military infantry. The Japanese katana, weikaizashi, and tanto are carried by some infantry and officers in Japan and other parts of Asia and the kukri is the official melee weapon for Nepal. Other swords in use today are the saber, the scimitar, the short sword, and the machete. In the case of a rat tail tang, the maker welds a thin rod to the end of the blade at the cross guard, this rod goes through the grip. In traditional construction, Swordsmiths peened such tangs over the end of the pommel, or occasionally welded the hilt furniture to the tang and threaded. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.